the Winnipeg Jets, it's funny. You go to Sportsnet or Daily Faceoff or TSN, really anywhere, and you get a trade bait, trade target, trade list board, whatever everyone wants to call it. The one common denominator is that look way up at the top, and it's a whole bunch of Winnipeg Jets. Did you have any element of surprise when you heard the reports on the weekend to quote The Athletic that as far as Connor Hellebuck and his next contract – that ship has sailed and uh, it will be with another team. Did that at all surprise you or considering what we heard from Hellebuck at the end of the season in his final address to the media, um, were you sort of feeling that that was going to be the case as we get closer to uh, the end of the month in June in Nashville? Not a bit surprised. Um, I've been saying, I think since pretty close to the beginning of the year last year uh, on Kenny and Rennie, that the Jets were poised to have one of the biggest garage sales in NHL history, off-season garage sales. And that's exactly where we're headed. Connor Hellebuck isn't a surprise to me because um, Connor Hellebuck, it was going to take uh, a number of those players to re-sign, to stay uh, you know, a legitimate threat for Connor Hellebuck to stick around and, and to be honest uh i mean let's just say you know the jets had somehow managed to pull off re-signing mark shifley re-signing pierre-luc dubois uh if you're connor hellebuck are you looking at this team based on what they've done over the last number of years with those players and saying we're on the verge of a cup i know he said it a couple of years ago after they got swept four straight to the montreal canadians i've made it vocal i thought that whole thing that he said about them being on the verge of being a dynasty was one of the most ridiculous things you've got to believe I have in yourself ever Sean, you have to believe you got, in yourself. <laughs> uh, the, the time to proclaim you are on the verge of being a dynasty is not after you've just been swept four straight. I will stand by that forever. Have belief in yourself. Just don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, but uh, I mean, even if the Jets were to bring everybody back, there would be no reason for Connor Hellebuck to believe that if he signed an eight-year extension, that this team would be on the verge of doing something special. Connor Hellebuck has made it entirely clear. The last thing, I, he, every time I talked to him, I did it while we were in the playoffs. I wanted to know what he needed to, to prove in the playoffs at this stage. He says nothing. All I need is the cup, right? So he's all in on that. Uh, to me, it looked like if you are being, you know, honest, taking an honest look, there's probably better places to go for that than the Winnipeg Jets. So, I mean, I, I, I think that he kind of left his his options open. He didn't want to close the door on this two years ago. But I would think that Connor Hellebuck in his mind has has been you know, very strongly looking at the idea of leaving Winnipeg for the last couple of years. So all of these things that are happening right now, I think are just confirmation of the stuff that we've already known and we've known for a long time. Pierre-Luc Dubois wants to, Connor Hellebuck wants to go to a place where he feels he has a better shot. And I think when it comes to Mark Shifley with all those players leaving, he's ready to, uh, well, A, uh, to see what else is out there, but B, I, I the one thing I've always thought about Mark Shifley is because he signed such a sweetheart deal for the Winnipeg Jets, I think he's in the position where he feels he has to make his money on the next deal. Uh, I think the combination of that and trying to see what else is out there means those three players are gone. Yeah, um, and, and and that is what makes the Jets so fascinating right now. And Kevin Sheveldayoff's maybe, I mean, some would say unenviable position, but I would imagine there's probably mm -hmm. a lot of general managers that would look at this as a real opportunity to completely Huge. reshape a team. And, and I think we'd all agree that that is necessary and maybe overdue. Um, yes. I'll say this about Dubois. I mean, listen, we all know the history. They traded from line A to get him. I mean, it was a huge, huge package. Um, you know, a number two pick and Rosovic for a guy that's number three pick. I mean, the the first choice would be this guy working out here, wanting to be here, staying here, and signing long term. I mean, obviously that was their plan. Um, there's no guarantees on that, and it's gone the other way. And now you've got a very talented young player approaching 25 years old that, you know, will have value uh, in and around the league. Hellebuck has been the franchise. He's been the backbone. Would they like to sign him? Absolutely. If that's not happening, you're sort of being forced into moves with those two players. The Shifley and Wheeler situations to me are very different. I mean, if all those players are gone, the first two that I mentioned are because of where they're coming from. I think the other two with Wheeler and particularly Shifley because of the value of his contract, maybe there's an argument to be made. You could have done it earlier and got more return, but the bottom line is yeah. 
that is more about moving out and creating a space for new players, for new voices, and really, Sean, establishing a new identity going forward for this Winnipeg Jets hockey club that might take a month, it might take a year, it might take more, but the bottom line is it'll be more about some younger players or players that have been here for a while that have been sort of secondary in nature when it comes to leadership, but also opening up opportunity for other players to um, have their voices heard and maybe be a little bit more um, impactful when it comes to building that team together and a new atmosphere around this club. I think you make an interesting comment when you talk about how long it would take to establish that new culture, because I mean, I think that was job number one for Rick bonus this year was to come in and try and create an entirely different culture. And boy, oh boy, this, he took some big swings to do it. And in the end, and I don't, I don't want to say this lightly because I, I don't think it didn't work because of anything that he didn't do, but in the end he failed at that. Like this was a team that by the end, you know, like I, I said, it, it, they, they essentially, after after Blake Wheeler had been stripped of his captaincy, by the end of the season, they pledged fealty to him, you know, in that end of year uh, avail, media avail. You know, he's, he didn't need the A to be our, or the C to be our captain. That didn't change anything. And I mean, it was the very players that you were waiting to step up and take control of this team, the likes of the Adam Lowry, who I think did it on the ice and had a huge impact as a leader on this team down the stretch. I think he's the guy that picked the Jets up, dusted them off, and got them over the playoff line. I think Josh Morrissey did a phenomenal job of carrying that for the bulk of the season before I think he got a little bit tired towards the edge of the end of the season. But like in, in everything that they did, it looked like those players were stepping up and doing that. And then in the end, basically, you know, pledging themselves to the previous captain who they were trying to get out of the way so that those guys could grow absolutely blew me away. And it tells me that, you know, th this team wasn't ready. You know, the players themselves were not ready to move on from the leadership or the culture that had been established for a long time, which is why, to your point, you know, the moves for PLD and Connor Hellebuck are far different than the moves that you would think of for uh, Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler, because if this team is not going to move on from the culture that looks to be getting them nowhere, if they refuse to do so with those players in the room and they're going to continue following that same old culture, it is incumbent upon the general manager and the organization to remove the, you know, torch bearers for the culture that they feel they need to change. And so in this case, I think that, that this has to be done. If you're talking about long overdue moves, I think them addressing the culture was ridiculously overdue. I can't believe it took them this long to get to this point. Um, but uh, it's something it looks like needs to be done. I, I mean, I, I could only imagine this, Huss, if, if they moved Pierre-Luc Dubois, if they moved Connor Hellbuck, even if they moved Mark Shifley and brought Blake Wheeler back into that room next year, it just seems to me that all those moves would do something along the lines of, of you know, re getting back some resources. But if this team doesn't address its culture, I don't know what else. Uh, I don't know what other <laughs> signs could be out there that you need to do this. You know what it's like, Granny? You know, we've all had or been in situations where we've been romantically involved with a partner. And maybe yeah. you're not married, but you're living together. And you know what? You have some great years. And then things sort of fizzle out. And you break up but you're still living in the same house. <laughs> you know, you can, you, you can, you can say all the right things. You can go about your business, but it is pretty much impossible to really move on with your lives. If you're yeah. still living in the same house, yeah. the Jets and Blake Wheeler and Rick bonus are still living in the same house. And <laughs> I think that, you know, moving on would be best for all parties involved.